Another day, another Chromebook review. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be diving into the Acer Chromebook 317 to see whether it's really worth it. As always, a massive thank you to my most active community members. You are all legends. More info in the description about how you can get a shout out on the channel. And with that being said, let's get into it. Bosh. So this Acer Chromebook has an Intel Pentium N6000 processor, 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage. So let's begin with the processor. Intel Celeron processors are the usual suspects in Chromebooks, similar to this one. But this Chromebook gets an upgrade, hence it being a little bit more expensive. The Intel Pentium N6000 is part of Intel's Pentium Silver line of processors. But what does that mean? Let me explain. So Pentium Silver processors aren't as good as Pentium Gold processors, as you probably would have guessed. They are ultimately designed to carry out moderate multitasking, streaming videos and browsing of the web. Accompanied with 4 gigs of RAM, you'll be able to have more tabs open without the laptop freezing, but not majorly more. Storage is another one of the big upgrades, seeing 64 gigs in this laptop, and for what you'd want to do on it, that should be enough. Of course, if you think you'll find yourself running into storage issues, you can always add an SD card later. Now, in terms of looks, it's pretty average. It's a full plastic build, which is to be expected at this price point, but it actually has an IPS screen, which is anti-glare, and all models in this range come with this, so that's a really nice feature. The keyboard is pretty solid and doesn't bend a great deal when typing on it. The keys are nice to press, and the trackpad, which is of course plastic, has a nice feel to it. It also weighs 2.2 kilograms, which is a little bit more than normal because of the increased screen size. Having a 17.3 inch display on this Chromebook is a game changer, because it will allow you to have a much more productive workflow. It also somewhat reduces the need for a larger external monitor, since this screen size should be enough. When it comes to battery life, you're looking at around 10 hours. As always, this will fluctuate depending on what you're doing, but this is just an average. This should easily last you the whole day, so it proves great for students and for work. Ports. There is a great selection on this laptop to be fair. On the left hand side, there is a USB-C port which can be used for both charging and data transfer. There is also a micro SD card slot for storage expansion and a 3.5mm audio jack. On the right hand side, there is another USB Type-C port, a USB 3.0 port and a Kensington lock. So it is safe to say that there is plenty of room to plug in peripherals such as a keyboard and mouse. So all in all, what should you do? Should you ignore it? Should you make a note of it? Compare it to other laptops of its kind? Or just go ahead and buy it? Well, I think you should definitely compare it to other laptops of its kind. Especially the alternatives in the 317 range. You can get an upgraded version with I believe 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. So if your budget stretches that far, it would definitely be an idea to check that out. That's about it for this video. I hope you did enjoy. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.